Hello everyone, my name is Maddie and welcome back to Tell Aquarium at the Alaska Sea Life Center. We have been going live on YouTube every single day at 12 and 2 p.m. Alaska time and we are really glad that you could join us this morning. Um, so, as you can see from our title, we are going to be talking about training today. Um, if you were with us last week, we filmed a video talking about enrichment and how there are so many different aspects to what enrichment is. And one of the main forms of enrichment that we give our animals here at the Sea Life Center is training. And so we're going to give you a little bit of a deep dive into what training entails, um, the tiny steps that lead up to teaching these behaviors, um, and then ultimately how you can use this at home with your pets as well if you would like. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, training is a huge part of animal welfare um, with animals here at the Sea Life Center. It, it, it creates a lot of positive behaviors. We can teach them things that are kind of stimulating for their, for their minds, for their bodies. And we can also teach them things that are really useful for our husbandry staff um, and teaching them behaviors that correlate with medical procedures, with day-to-day -day routine. Um, there are so many different exa examples that I could give you. So um, I'm going to break down what training is piece by piece. Um, and how we build those pieces together to get these really great behaviors. So the first thing that I want to start off with when teaching about training is we utilize positive reinforcement here at the Sea Life Center. And that means a couple different things. Um, but first off, training is always voluntary for the animal. So we're going to start a training session with them. And if they are interested and engaged, we're going to keep it going. But if they don't want to participate, we're not going to force them. If they don't want to start, we're not going to force them. If at any point throughout the training session they decide that they're no longer interested and they want to stop, totally OK. That's totally fine. We're never going to force them into a situation because we want to keep training really upbeat. We want to keep it fun. We want to keep it something positive in that animal's mind so it's something that they're looking forward to and not something that they're kind of bummed out about or maybe that they're dreading. Um, so we make it really fun. We keep it lighthearted. And it's always voluntary. Um, participation. And so another part of positive reinforcement is the way that we reward them throughout the training session. So when an animal gives a behavior that is what we asked for and is correct, we're always going to give them a positive reinforcement. So that usually means food for them because food for our animals is extremely motivating. Our animals are very highly food motivated. They want to work for that fish. They want to work for that treat. And so if they give us something correctly, we're going to give them that um, treat at the end, which is usually a fish, which I'll talk a little bit about later. But um, on the other hand, with positive reinforcement is if they do something wrong, nothing happens. So if they don't give us the correct behavior, if they're kind of ignoring us along the way, there's no negative reinforcement. We just let it be, and then we try again later. And so we ignore that, and we don't give them, there's no punishment involved. It's once again very positive, very lighthearted so that we keep the animals um, excited about the potential to do something right instead of being afraid of doing something wrong. And so that builds that really strong relationship with their trainer, which is another thing that I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but it really creates that level of trust. And that is a huge component of training, is that trust between the animal and the trainer. So step one, positive reinforcement. It's always voluntary. And we are going to reward correct behavior, but we're going to ignore incorrect behavior. Um, another huge aspect of training, like I said, is that level of trust, which goes along with um, positive reinforcement. So our husbandry staff have cultivated this really, really great relationship with, the, with our animals. And so that is another reason why training is possible here, is because our animals trust the staff that they're working with. They know that they're there to take care of them. They know that they're there to provide them with what they need. And so they know that training is just another fun part of the day. And so they are more willing to listen to that um, staff member. They're more willing to work with them because they're building off of that relationship. So a lot of you might be wondering, why do we even do training here? Um, there are so many different behaviors that we can train, and I'll talk about them in a little bit. But one of the main reasons is for medical procedures. So to make it a less stressful environment for the animal, if they need to go to the doctor, um, if any of you guys have taken your pets to the vet before, it can be kind of scary, because they don't really know what's happening. There's new environments around them. There's new um, stimuli that we're introducing to them. And so if we can make that less scary and we can train that regular behavior into them, then that makes it so much of a less stressful experience, both for the animal and for our staff that are working with them. Um, so for example, we might train them to enter a crate so that we can move them around, um, so that we can kind of keep them still while performing other behaviors on them. So crate training is huge. A lot of them are trained 
um, to maybe open their mouths so that we can inspect their teeth, what's going on in there, and they just can sit there still with their mouth open. And what they think is just a behavior is actually really helpful for our staff. And some animals are even trained for things like voluntary blood draws. Um, if you tuned in a couple weeks ago, you saw that Mara, our stellar sea lion, was trained to have ultrasounds done and to have radiographs done, which is huge, that we don't have to do anything scary for the animal. They're just doing a behavior that they know is normal, and then we can perform these really great tasks around them. So medical procedures is a huge reason as to why we do training here. Um, another aspect is maybe just for some exercise to get them moving a little bit. So we might do some breach trainings, um, which I'll show you a picture of in just a moment, but we can get our animals to swim through the water, we can get them to jump out of the water, we can get them to do these different movements um, to get that exercise going, to get them physically moving, which is another huge part of enrichment. Um, and some of it just might be you know, something exciting for their brain. So we can do behaviors that aren't necessarily um, exercise, but it's still something that they have to work towards, it's something that they have to remember um, and so that is a huge part of enrichment. But training is very valuable, as you can see from those many examples. Um, so at this point, I'm actually gonna talk about kind of behind the scenes of training and the different aspects and pieces that you will see in a particular training session. So um, to break it down, when you are training an animal, I've got my stuffed seal over here that I'll kind of use as a prop in just a moment. Um, but if you're ever watching a training session, the first thing that you're gonna see is the trainer asking for a behavior. And that has a few different components. So you might see them verbalizing that behavior. So they're gonna say what they want and it might be accompanied by a hand gesture. So if you see a breach training, they might be holding their hand up, which you'll see. Um, if they're trying to open their mouths, they might do kind of something like that to get them to open up. But it's usually a pair between a vocalization and a hand motion. So they first ask for that behavior. And then the second step, of course, is to wait and see if that animal performs that behavior. So step one, you ask for it. Step two, the animal is going to theoretically do that behavior. And then after that is when we introduce something called a bridge. So a bridge is a marker that lets the animal know that they have done something correctly. And a bridge can look like a couple different things. Here at the Sea Life Center, you'll see our trainers often say the word good in a high-pitched tone. Um, and that sound lets the animal know that that's right. And so they know that that comes with food. But other forms of bridges that you might hear are whistles, you might hear a high-pitched whistle noise, or sometimes people use clickers. And a clicker is actually something that you can buy at a pet store, um, and it just kind of makes a little fast and high-pitched clicking sound. And so once again, this is that marker that we have trained to let the animal know that this sound always comes with a reward at the end of it. So you hear that clicker, they know they're gonna get food afterwards. Um, and you might be wondering, why do we even need this middle ground? Why do we need the clicker? Why do we need a bridge? Why can't we just give them food immediately afterwards? Um, and it's because it's really important to mark exactly when that animal um, exhibits a correct behavior so they don't get confused as to what exactly they did right. So for example, if I am training an animal and they are far away from me, like they're in the water and they exhibit a behavior correctly, it's really hard for me to get them that food immediately. Um, and I want them to know the second that they did something right. So what we do instead is we train that bridge and we, we kind of create a contract with the animal that lets them know that if I make this bridge sound, you are gonna get food. And so it's kind of like a placeholder. So the animal does the behavior correctly, they hear that bridge and they know, okay, that was right, I'm gonna get food. Um, and once again, that's building off of that level of trust. The animal trusts you and knows that if I hear that sound, that's a contract that I'm gonna get that food afterwards. Um, so to start from the beginning, we're gonna ask for the behavior, they're gonna do the behavior, they're gonna hear that bridge, and then they'll get the reward. And it always ends with a reward. Um, and so that can be fish like I have here that I'll show in just a moment, um, but it's anything that that animal is gonna be excited about, anything that makes them happy, um, anything that is kind of worth that working for them. So for example, if I was gonna train my seal to um, come up to a target, which is a behavior that a lot of our animals know how to do, essentially what that means is we have things that, um, this is an example of a target, this is kind of a stationary target. Our animals are trained to come and touch this target. And so that can be a way for us to kind of move our animals to round, around, maybe to get them to kind of stay stationary for a moment because they are exhibiting that target behavior. Um, but all of these steps kind of sound a lot easier than they actually are. 
it takes a long time to get that animal to learn this specific behavior. So to start off with, we just kind of want the animal to explore what's going on. I can't immediately say target to this seal who's never seen it before and expect them to know what's coming next. So um, for example, if I were training a seal, seals are naturally pretty curious animals. So what we might do is we might just place a target down and if they come up to it and they just kind of sniff it to check it out what it is, we're gonna do that bridge, we're gonna say good and we're gonna immediately give them that reward. And so then they're going to kind of be confused at first, be like, what the heck just happened? Like, what did I do? I don't know. I liked it because I got fish in the end. Um, and then they might kind of go away from it. And then maybe later on, if they come up and do it again, we're immediately going to go good, and they're going to get that reward. And then soon enough, they're going to piece together in their brain, OK, when I touch my nose to this thing on the ground, that usually means I get fish later. And so we build that connection in their brain and then soon enough, it becomes a behavior where we can ask them, we can put this down, we can say target, they know what we're asking for, they come up for it, and then we give them food. And it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of time leading up to that, it definitely doesn't take a matter of seconds like I just showed. Um, and then it's also really important to remember that once an animal learns a behavior, it's not permanent, it's something that you have to practice and keep doing every single day in order to keep that muscle memory working in their brains. Um, it would be great if we could just teach it to them one time, forget about it for a couple weeks, and then try and do it again, but that's just not how it works. So we're building on that trust behavior. We're letting these animals know that we're here to help them, and we want to introduce these behaviors for them, um, but we have to do it every single day. And so it's a lot of work, um, but it's definitely well worth it. Um, and so some of the things that we have taught our animals to do here, this is just a small list, not definitely not exhaustive of what we can do, but. Our animals know how to roll, they can open their mouths, some of them can bark on command, we can get them to show their tongues to us, um, we can get them to go into the water when we want them to and then come back out of it. They know how to station, which just means um, we point to a station on the ground and then they know to go there and stay there. Um, they can breach, which I'll show you a picture of in just a moment. And then some medical procedures is they are trained to receive eye drops, so that's not super scary. They're trained for x-rays and ultrasounds like we talked about, and even voluntary blood draws, which is huge, such a huge aspect that we don't have to sedate an animal for them to get a blood draw. They can stay awake during the whole thing. This is just a trained behavior that they are comfortable receiving, which is huge. So I do want to show you some pictures of examples of training um, and kind of how we get that going at the Sea Life Center. So these are some props. Um, up in the upper left-hand corner, corner, that's another example of a target. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a block that you place on the ground. Oftentimes you might see a ball on the edge of a stick that you hold out and the animal knows to come up and kind of touch their nose to it. So that can be an example of a target. Um, and then up at the top is an example of a clicker. So that can be your bridge. That's something that you can find at any pet store. Um, and it makes that fast clicking sound that lets the animal know that they did that correctly. You can use a whistle, which is below it, like I said. And training always requires some sort of positive reinforcement. So the animals need something that they can work towards, like a bucket of fish. And then here's a great example of a breach behavior. So this is one of our stellar sea lions. And you can see our trainer kind of up in the upper left-hand corner. And so I've pointed out these different aspects that I've mentioned. Um, you can see her holding her hand up. That's her hand motion. And I'm sure that she was also asking for a behavior at the same time. And so that's her you know, asking for that behavior. That hand motion means breach to that animal. And so then you can see our sea lion is breaching for her. And so um, she is then going to say, good, as soon as that animal does that. And you can see she's got that big bucket of fish. So she is ready to reward that behavior. And you can also see that, that eye contact. That animal is looking at our trainer, and that trainer is looking at that animal. So they have that relationship that they're building on. It takes a lot of focus. And then this is an example of a sea lion sticking their tongue out for us, which is, it might be kind of silly, um, but it's another really fun behavior that we do. So you can see that she is pointing at our sea lion, which means to stick her tongue out. Um, she is making eye contact with that animal. They, he is doing exactly what she's asking for, and she has got that big bucket of fish ready to reward for that correct behavior. And then here's another example of a breach. So you can see her standing a little bit closer. She's got that hand up. Um, they've got that focus going on, and she's got that bucket of positive um, reinforcement. So it's kind of like a routine. You'll see these things repeating again and again and again, um, and that's to kind of get that animal down with that routine 
Um, but also it just makes it easier to replicate and kind of build and create really um, more unique behaviors off of those. And it's not just mammals that we can do training with. We can also train a lot of our birds here, which is really awesome. They can also be um, trained with positive reinforcement and they can receive um, those rewards as well. So we've got that hand motion going on. You see them looking at each other and that our bird is raising their wings just like we asked them to. And then you can see he's got that bucket of fish um, on his hip as well, ready to reward that positive behavior. And so, um, like I said, we can also train them for really cool medical procedures. So we've got a seal on the left and a, heart, um, and a sea lion on the right, and they're both getting their teeth brushed, which is amazing in my opinion that these animals can be trained to sit there and trust that staff member enough to let them stick something weird in their mouth and brush their teeth, which is, which is a sensation that's not necessarily normal to them, but they trust that that trainer is there to help them and that that trainer is not gonna hurt them in any way. So building off of that positive reinforcement is huge. And then our seal in the middle there is getting measured. Um, so you can see she's got a tape measure on top and you can kind of see the trainer standing in front of them, um, focusing on that animal and that is the trainer asking for the behavior. So they're probably asking them to station um, and so that animal knows to just stand still and whatever's happening around them is totally fine because he trusts that he's gonna get a reward at the end of this. Um, so, those are some really cool examples um, of different training behaviors that you can see. We do have a lot of really cool videos also on our YouTube channel of some previous training behavior that we've asked for, so I highly encourage you to take a look. Um, but if I were gonna do a fake training session, kind of like I showed earlier, is let's say I wanna ask for a target, I'm gonna stick this out here and say the word target. Um, if this seal comes and does this, I'm gonna immediately say good, and then it gets a fish. And then we build off of that. So training sessions might last around 10 minutes or so. They're not super long because you wanna make sure that the animal is keeping their focus and they're not getting exhausted by the end of it. Another huge part of training is watching that animal threshold and making sure that they're not getting frustrated and that they're not you know, getting bored of it because the second they start getting frustrated, that's when the positive reinforcement kind of diminishes a little bit. So you're watching their threshold to make sure that they are still having a good time and you don't wanna push them a little bit too far because then that kind of makes the training less fun for them. So like I said, this is definitely something that you can do with your pets at home. You don't need a clicker, you don't need a whistle, your mouth can definitely act as a bridge. And so that's teaching your animal that if you say good in a high pitched voice and they're gonna get food, so if you wanted to teach your dog how to target, for example, you can use your fingers. You can show them that these two fingers um, extended out like this is when you're asking for a target. But your step one is going to get them to know that the bridge means food. So it's kind of silly, but you might wanna spend a couple days just walking around the house, randomly saying good, and then dropping a food in front of them. And then they kind of, it's kind of silly at first, but they really like it because there's just these random food pellets dropping around them but then they soon start to realize that when they hear that sound, they're gonna get food. And once you have that foundation, you can start introducing different tasks to them. That's when you can maybe teach them to sit, you can teach them to target, um, and you can kind of build off of that. So if any of you do end up training your pets at home, please take videos and pictures and share them with us on Twitter using our hashtag Teleaquarium. We would love to see that. Um, and also, if you come visit the Sea Life Center, I hope that you see some training in person someday please take a look at our YouTube and watch some previous training sessions and see if you can identify those different pieces um, that encompass all of the training. As you can see, it's pretty complex. It takes a lot of practice and it takes um, a lot of time as well. So once you learn it, you have to keep practicing over and over again, but you can really create such a wide repertoire with your animal of the different behaviors that they can utilize. But that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we hope to see you at our 2 p.m. session. We're gonna have a really great session on our wildlife response program here at the Sea Life Center. Um, and if you like this, please give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we hope to see you soon.